extra perspective on the realities when crossing the U.S. Mexico border illegally. Agents hard at work in the Sunland Park area in the New Mexico station. Uh, it is the busiest in the El Paso sector. While migrants make the daring journey and face unexpected obstacles once arriving, ABC 7's Brianna Perez was boots on in the ground to catch a glimpse of what lies beyond the border wall. We got an alert at 4121. Go right here. It's 6 a.m. I had only stepped inside the car with Border Patrol agent Refugio Corrales when a report of a dozen migrants turning themselves in came in. Yeah, this particular group are, are give ups. Mm. But like in this in this area here, they they usually try to run away from you. Driving there, Agent Corrales told me why many choose to cross through the Sunland Park area. A lot of the people with immigration histories or criminal histories typically come through here because, according to them, it's easier. But versus in El Paso, all the people that are coming in, they're just giving up, you know? 11 migrants apprehended minutes into the morning shift. They're from Honduras, Guatemala, and Ecuador. It's been a 15-day journey for most. This man I spoke to broke down in tears. He's saying he misses his family, and he was hoping to get a job in the U.S. to send them money they desperately need. They believe that there is actually a safe passage. But when reality is that uh, our agents are seeing a different story every day, you know. There are multiple challenges, many dangerous when you cross the border illegally. Some migrants believe it's easier to enter the U.S. through Sunlim Park, but Border Patrol says they must pass through dangerous territory before reaching the border wall. This is per se, from what we've heard before, one of the most dangerous cities in, in Ciudad Juarez. But along this part of the border, there is no wall. So that's where the fence ends right there. There's no more fence. If you can see that little shack at the very top, yeah. like with green, sort of. Oh, I'll be okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's like a kind of like a, well, it looks like a, like a smuggler at, uh, lookout. They'll hang out there. You always see people there in that little shack. Along the border, you find a lot of things that migrants leave behind. We see water here, as well as a makeshift ladder. Border Patrol agents tell me that they hook the top of this makeshift ladder to the border wall, about 18 feet tall, and attempt to cross over. I mean, at this height right here, it doesn't seem too high, but this will break some bones if you fall off that oh, yeah. top of that. that it could probably kill you, too. Oh, yeah. Later in the morning, more reports of migrants. So they got, you know, they saw a bus stopping nearby and dropping on this individuals. Some of the uh, migrants in this group, they were trying to start running, but they, they, they saw the our hate to like, here, so they, they stopped. Throughout our journey with Border Patrol, we got reports of migrants coming through the border wall using this hole. 22 of them entered through it, many of them with kids. This woman says coming here with her husband and child has been horrible. She said her eight-year-old son has cancer and other illnesses. But she said they had to risk everything because everything in Ecuador is hard. She says she came to the U.S. to bring her son security. She told me he lost an eye due to his illness. She says their country doesn't offer the treatments he needs. He'll be, he'll be uh, screened at the station and then screened again at the processing center. And they're the ones that make the ultimate decision on what, what to do from there. Yeah, it's, it's hard to see that, the kids. Agents say most migrants think the journey is over after crossing the border wall, but four miles of desert awaits them. Most of these people, as I said, they had already paid somebody, not to always only transport them here, but also to make that walk 
and have somebody to pick him in, on this side of the border. We kept driving along the border wall until Agent Corrales spotted a group of suspected smugglers hiding in the mountains on the Mexico side of the border. There they are right there, look. See, these are the smugglers right here. They're always on their cell phones. That's one of the distinctive ways to notice. Agents call them the lookouts or scouters. Before I stepped out of the car, I asked the smugglers in Spanish what they were doing and if we could speak to them. But a man yelled, don't get any closer. They decided not to talk to us. Agent Claudio Herrera is asking them why they don't want to talk but they don't answer the question. The suspected smuggler is saying they had just gotten done with a job. What he just said, they just pushed a group through here. That's yeah, five, yeah. yeah. The smugglers made sure to stay on the Mexico side of the border, waiting for us to leave. We have seen how they start throwing rocks at us, our units. Uh, we have seen some agents being assaulted, unfortunately. Agents say they couldn't apprehend them because they were on the opposite side of the border. Later, I was interviewing Agent Corrales and I noticed two migrants walking behind him. I see two migrants running behind you. Really? Yeah. You see them? Yes. There goes the agents. That that group was probably those guys pushing them through. Transnational criminal organizations, this this people, they just don't care about the lives. They just uh, want to make profit out of them uh, and, and the reality is that a simple American dream can become an easy nightmare. Brianna Perez, ABC7. Border Patrol says more than 145 migrants died crossing through the El Paso sector in fiscal year 2023. Border Patrol also told ABC7 most of them died because of the record high temperatures last summer.